I've been keeping my eye out for a while for one of these Seiko UC2000 series smart wristwatches with a accompanying base station. And earlier this year, I managed to finally find one for a decent price. It was of course sold as not working, which to me typically means the battery is dead and the person doesn't know how to change it. But in this case, both pieces were legitimately broken and I managed to fix them. And when I got this, the watch was not working and the base unit was having an issue. Despite having fresh batteries or being plugged in on AC power or DC input, uh, it would the printer would just say, uh, check batteries and do nothing else. It wouldn't talk to the watch, which was dead, obviously, and nothing would happen. But now I mean, it works fine. Uh, nothing will happen on the watch until you are in transmit mode. And to me, the quickest, easiest way to see that the device is working is to play with the contrast. If that goes up and down, then the watch and the base unit are talking. You don't have to worry about things. So the first issue with the base station takes three AA batteries. Here, was the change battery error that I was always getting. This opens up from the printer side. So, this paper unraveled. So I noticed when I powered this up, there were two capacitors over here, identical, and this one was getting hot. When I removed it, it started working. So this capacitor was, has an internal short. Uh, it should be replaced. I haven't done it because it seems to work fine relatively without it. And another issue, there's some liquid damage here around the printer head connector. Uh, there's an electrolyte cap here and here, which potentially could be culprits for leaking some corrosive juices, but it was only here on the connector. Really strange. So I cleaned that up. Um, it seems to work fine after that. That's good. Onto the watch. Now the watch originally uses a 2325 cell, which is a little bit bigger than a 2032 and thinner. I didn't have any on hand, but I do have a 2025, which somewhat fit inside, which is what I have in here now. And if you open up the back, this is where the PH0 screw comes in handy. That aside, so here's the noise piezo unit. This is the transmission coil, this golden circle. You can see my 2032 in here, which has lots of room around it because it's a little bit small, but it yet fits. Um, it has some waterproofing. There's a seal there. This entire unit will just pop right out. There we go. And you have to be careful here. There's a little spring here that touches the speaker. So you can just pull that out, put it somewhere. You know it's going to be safe. So as we're meddling with this, it won't fall out and disappear. To disassemble it, to replace the battery, you just re remove these four uh, Phillips, or sorry, flathead screws. That just removes this plate and the battery will pop out. I'm not going to do that here because it doesn't really matter for what I'm going to show you. Uh, there are four other screws here, also flathead, but they're like razor thin. I had to take this smallest bit I have, which was still too thick, and put it in a pair of pliers and just kind of squish it down, down, down until it was very sharp, and then I was able to slot it in. Um, two issues with this. It wasn't turning on, and once I finally got it to turn on, it wasn't speaking to the base unit. The uh, issue with not turning on was there was a weird thing where every time I pushed a button, the display would come on momentarily and then fade out. And if I pulsed a button, I could just get it to go on and the clock was count. But once it faded out, the clock would reset. The watch, The brain of the watch was not getting power but it seemed to be leaching power through maybe some internal diodes via the buttons, which are connected to positive. So this tells me that the positive line was somehow not connected. And my first thought was if I can't figure it out, I'm gonna just get a bunch of resistors and kind of bridge them um, to the positive in a way that doesn't toggle the button, but gives enough juice to the brain to turn it on. But I didn't have to do that. What I did notice while fiddling around, there's a little varistor here when I was poking in there to see if that did anything, I noticed giving it pressure 
would start the watch up. So to me, that says there's a, a bad solder joint in there. Could be on the resistor, it's the barrister itself, or who knows. Um, the second issue with the transmission, I found that the wire, these two points here, uh, was broken somewhere. And to figure out how to get around that, I took my multimeter on resistor ohm measurement and um, first checked the continuity and there was nothing. So the loop was open. This is not turning on. There we go. But then um, what I did was take some moisture and really uh, reality was my spit and coated the top of the ring, touched one, see if I got any kind of resistance measurement. And I did from this point to somewhere on here, but nothing from there. So it told me that this wire was intact, but this one was broken. And what I did to get around that, you can maybe see I have a little cat hair whisker here, a springy piece of metal attached to this terminal and just kind of poking in to the coil from the outside here. And that worked. So this little cat hair whisker, it's cat's whisker, I should say, is just pushing in there through pressure, uh, breaking some of the enamel of the coil and finishing the loop. Luckily for me, it seems that the break was on the outside loop, not somewhere internal. So there's enough uh, inductance in there still to communicate with. I'm gonna take this apart for you to show you the fix for um, no power, in, the, in my case at least. I'm now I haven't had a problem. So this LCD part comes off, and there are the button uh, contacts here. They just come right off. So put these aside so they don't fly off somewhere that you don't see where they go. And they are magnetic, or ferrous, I should say. And you'll see there's a, um, if I pop the LCD out, note that so this is right side up orientation. The LCD has some white dots on the right edge. Keep that on the right edge. Although I'm not sure there is a polarity, but I'm just doing that to maintain consistency. So we pull the LCD off. You'll see there's a, uh, I guess an RF shield, EMF shield under there. And this just sits in a way that a little tab here goes through a little hole in the corner there. So fiddly. I've lost that zebra stripe, that's fine. Put that back in place. Put this back in place. We'll set that aside. So this is the one side of the PCB. And the other side has a uh, a uh, daughter board that's been soldered down. And what I found when pushing on the barrister here is that uh, resoldering these points nearby it had brought the watch back to life. So to fix it, in my case, I just added a little bit of solder on these points in this general area. But it might be a good idea to do it on all of them because I'm not sure how well you can see it on camera. There's very scant soldering connecting the main board from the daughter board. I'm presuming this is the main CPU, whereas the other side is LCD controllers. I'm not sure. So we have the timing crystal, we have an inductor for the buzzer, and you can see the test pads here. So this is the contact for the negative, which goes to this tab on the battery. So we have our test points here, here, and over here. This one goes to negative up there. Oops, there was that. Again, ferrous metal. And this one has positive, which is the one that's poking through here. So if you're not too sure the battery is working or making continuity, those are your test points for negative and positive to see if the battery is going to the main board. And again, this is the reset line. Now on reassembly, this little tongue for the 
negative of the battery has two little posts. In this case, tweezers are going to be my friend. As you kind of want to pop out because it's too small, but just right. Negative goes on this pad. So we can just bring that down. And also this inductor goes into that hole. Bring that down like so, so that fits nicely. Oh, before I continue on that, the um, coil has these two little tongues here and make contact with the board uh, here, these two points. So one goes directly to the positive of the battery and then one goes to the uh, um, transmission circuit. And the LCD tapering is on the top match the taper of the watch body or the watch circuit board. Let me get this back in place. Now the buttons have their two posts that can sit on. And now we put this crossbar down on top, make them secure, get your screw in one corner. Got it. Okay. So the LCD is suddenly springing to life. We have our full display on. Make sure it's nice and snug. Nice and snug. Okay. So now that the watch seems to be functioning again, check the buttons. By default, the contrast seems a little too high. So, going back to the base unit, just plop it on there. In this case, you can see nothing's happening. So that takes us back to my little cat's hair hack here. If I, I must have knocked it while fiddling with it, so I'm just gonna move it around somewhere new there maybe. Let's try this again. There we go. So now the contrast is changing. It's talking. Next, to dump out my little bits here, see if it can still speak through the base plate. And again, cool. Let's check one of the functions. No, nope, does not like that. Again, when it beeps, it's going to want to print out transmission error, so I'm resetting it. And you can see there's an issue, so I'm going to have to poke it somewhere else. It's not a good spot for the whisker to poke the coil. There's an issue with the communication. Let's see what happens there. Okay, we've got contrast control, basic. Perfect, there we go. Okay, now the problem with this hack is that um, because the wire is just kind of sitting there poking it, if you drop the watch, it could dislodge the wire. And I'm not comfortable enough gluing this in place to prevent that from happening because who knows what else could happen if I glue it. Um, it's going to be stuck to that wire and I, it's going to ruin the coil. So I'd rather just have it accessible. Oops. There's that metal piece. The little metal fin goes over the buttons. Again, I'm not sure the purpose of it. Let's get on the main, mo main, uh, main mode. And do best to get finger smudges off and dust. Looks good. Buttons down there with the dots, like so. Then we have to get our little buzzer spring into the opening that belongs. It's this little teardrop shaped hole to accommodate the little finger on the spring, which is supposed to keep it from popping out, but that doesn't work too well. 
There we go. Pop the case back on. Double check that there is communication. shit for lowercase. Carriage returns take forever. And the copy should display what's on the screen in the printer. I guess not in basic mode, but if we run it, That is full speed. And again, it will not run away from the beat space station. Complain about transmission error, that's fine. If we go into the memo, we edit a memo. It's gonna, I believe, copy it off the watch. Not sure what it does at this stage. Type in a new memo. Oops, I want my lowercase, so shift. Copy, it prints out? Yes. Hit copy, it prints it out. So this thermal paper is who knows how old. We have copy, memo A. I, Ekerke, was here 2022-07-31. Line one, two, three, end. Now to save this in the watch, we have to shift end. I'm just going to copy it into the watch. And we're done. So one thing I wonder about basic, in these uh, page up, page down functions, So you can see the prompt has already scrolled up. If we page up, oh, we're in edit mode, or is that just a hotkey? That's just a hotkey. So F1, it's nothing, F2 is edit, F3, F5 is run. Hmm, okay, well, the answer is that. 